I do love cooking. I love people being in my kitchen with me. I love food. I love the way that it brings people together. I love that it communicates time, right? If time is one of our greatest resources, then it's, I spent this time for you and it's a gift. So, um, which I'm trying to teach my children, but it's weird to be like, I did this thing for you. You need to say thank you. <laughs> but like a, anytime somebody makes something for you, this is a gift um, kind of thing. So, yeah. So we were gonna have acorn squash, but I, ran, I got wrapped up in my writing today. And so we're gonna have chicken salad <laughs> and tomato basil soup. Oh, so. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Natalie Jennings. This is a Face Project podcast, stories told by people from around the world that help to broaden our understanding of the human experience. I'm your host, and in the spirit of 2017, this is episode number 17. We took a little bit of a holiday hiatus, as you might have noticed, but we are back with bi-monthly episodes that you can listen to in a number of places, including iTunes and Google Play Music. If you're not really sure how to listen to this podcast and you're tuning in right now on the website, there's a link above that says ways to listen, and that'll take you to a page where there's a number of ways that you can enjoy the podcast. Without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to a Face Project Podcast. Face Project Project Podcast. Podcast. It's just pure life. It's pure innocence. It's pure, innocence. It's pure brighter, like gratitude. That. So I ended up in America. I am an adopted Korean and, and have been all my life. It's a perfect blend of, of science and creativity. I was screaming, I'm, I will live over here till I die. There's something about this story that I think is really fitting um, in terms of it being the new year and the timing of it. Danny talks a lot about introspection and really looking inward um, for truth and understanding on a variety of subjects, but mostly about understanding herself. And I think that's what a lot of us try and do this time of year is understand what our motivations are, try and create new goals and attempt to change the things that maybe we identified that we don't like and I guess it's kind of like a rebirth. So as I'm recording this I am sitting in my house in Minneapolis and if any of you are familiar with Minneapolis in January then you know that it is a frozen tundra and because we had a little bit of rain followed by a major freeze It's like an ice skating rink everywhere you go, and I can hear trucks and cars kind of scraping down the street, even through uh, these insulated walls. So not in a studio today. Apologies for any extra noise you might hear, like the crunching of snow or the cracking of ice. (laughs) Um, It's not a bad sound, I guess, but I suppose it's a good time to be grateful for this, uh, this warm, cozy house. I'm in. And before we jump into today's into today's story, I'd like to quickly mention for all of you tactile, book-loving readers out there that we do have a magazine, a digital and print magazine that you can purchase in our online store at afaceproject.com. The print magazine averages about 100 pages, really nice lovely stock paper incredible printing job by edition one books and uh, it features all of the storytellers from that quarter so what you'll get your hands on are transcripts and photo essays from our storytellers if you're not into the tactile thing you want to throw on your coffee table then check out our digital versions of the magazine they are eight dollars and you can buy those in the store as well If you're not sure about any of that, head on over to our website anyway, and a little widget will pop up after a few seconds where you can enter in your email and get a free sample chapter from our last issue, issue number three. 
Finally, I'd just like to suggest that if you are a regular listener, and we have more regular listeners every episode we publish, so thank you, thank you, please consider in the spirit of, I guess, Minnesota Public Radio or National Public Radio, um, donating to our cause. It takes a, a bit of money to do what we do with the talented people we work with, and if you like what you hear, consider donating 5 10 15 bucks a month or a one-time donation, anything you can afford. You can do that as well by visiting our website and clicking on the contribute link. One of the things that you might notice when you listen to today's story are a lot of little kitchen and dining room noises that were purposely left in to add some texture to this one. Danny invited us over and shared her story around a table with a beautifully cooked meal, home-cooked meal, um, and it was a, it was right before Christmas, so the the house, her home, was uh, decorated with a Christmas tree and all sorts of other things, and it was an incredibly cozy, lovely afternoon. So if you hear some of those things, that's what you're hearing. Without jabbering on too much more, I'll get into it. This is Danny. For some reason, a blank, real page with a pen or pencil to me, feels like an, like an open opportunity space. It feels like it's mine. And I can hold the book and it's more a part of me. I can sit there for 20 minutes with that blank cursor that just keeps blinking and I'll just, it's so stunting for me. I hate it. But because, right, like I have so many things I want to say and I want to do like, so many projects stir in me and so it would be more efficient if i could just wrestle through this computer issue and just come at it right and like i could save time and it's efficient and it would be easier and we know that that's not true nor is it the way i don't know that it should be and so i i will start i will always start in the notebook And then sometimes, oh, that looks great. Um, Yeah. I I do, I think, I mean, I think our mind, I'm going to speak for me, I cannot speak for anybody else, but it, it lives different, it sounds different, it breathes different. Um, From my head, going through my hand in in a pen to the paper. Um, and yeah, I mean, as somebody who is always trying to look and connect herself to history, because I think that there's, our, our root system is there, um, our depth is there and whatnot, <clears throat> not all modern conveniences are the best. And it forces me to slow down, but it feels like that's where I'm my most honest and I try to make it as honest as possible, where not even I'm excused from like deep investigation and critique. And most of the time I'm writing about me or like me wrestling with truth, perceived truth, awareness, knowledge, and understanding. With all of the ways that we get pushed back in that, um, that's what I'm wrestling with all, all the time. Yeah, that journal space is pretty sacred to me. But I was even telling Daniel, I just took a, I took a break from all social media because it was just, felt like everything was for public consumption. And I thought, this is a time for me just to wrestle and to wonder and to ask. And so it was funny, I got six journals as Christmas gifts last year and I had to buy three more. I mean, they're full mm-hmm. because I'm just writing all, all the time um, of things I'm watching, of things I'm experiencing, of things I'm seeing. And then, and then what does that mean? And why do I think that? And, and trying to even just ask myself the opposite questions or a biased opinion or even a really like gut-wrenching, horrible question that makes me a terrible person to believe something about somebody else. Like, really, I want to know the answer. Mm-hmm. And so it's been, I've been writing a lot, but it hasn't been put out. But it's, it's starting to turn in me because I've recognized the I found some healing in like this public consumption space and in all of my questioning and wondering and processing um, of 
culture, diversity, inner city, rural, all of our politics, policy versus people, um, how does that work in, in all of these spaces? Food, does, is anything worth fighting for? You know what I mean? Like, does anything really make a difference? And all of those, the struggles, um, starting to find my ground again and realizing the strength that's coming out of that and my answers in that and the truth that I hold. Um, if I'm gonna say something, I wanna believe it. I'm not gonna just reiterate something because I heard it said somewhere. I want to say, I, I, I believe this. My writing right now is my therapy. <laughs> but at some point I'm pretty sure my children are gonna be like, what's mom doing in her journals all the time? I was, you know, I grew up in Detroit See, let's grab this. In a in in comfort, I wasn't ever pulled out of that. I was kind of told that this is the way, and no one ever said, "Have you thought about this?" And so now we kind of exist in this space that is always like mentally and emotionally uncomfortable because it keeps pushing at all my preconceived ideas and notions. Um, philosophies, theories, and construct. And so it's kind of just been this pushback to wrestle through and to engage with new ideas and to really separate truth from tradition, I guess, in all things, in the way that we function. And so it's, we do this because, because we've done the work to figure out why, and this is important. Um, so yeah. For whatever truth or purpose, or purpose, I'm a deep people pleaser. And I was told my whole life <clears throat> that I had great potential. And that actually was a huge negative to me, it turns out. I didn't total, fully recognize that until this last year. Because then who I am right now wasn't ever enough. Because I have potential, right? Like you could, you could, be you could. <laughs> that right. is suffocating. Mm -hmm. And no matter what, never felt like enough. So I, I, I needed to, to wrestle with that because I didn't want who I am or what I do to be for somebody else's benef benefit. And I don't know that that's the right way to say it, but for your approval, not for your benefit, but for your approval, or to m meet this unspoken expectation that I don't quite know what it is, but I'm gonna keep trying to find it. And so I really needed to tear a lot of that down and find what it is that I needed to say and what was in me instead of this lofty potential that was never specific, but broad in general. And I kept chasing not knowing what it was. So I saw that there was an actress who wrote, one of her memoirs was a letter to all of her, all the men in her life and ex-boyfriends, and they were like goodbye letters. <laughs> so I was like, I kinda like that. You know, instead of just like this narrative that it was just this piece that you could hop in and out of. And I thought, I'm gonna write a book of obituaries and it's gonna be all the things that I'm letting go of, that you've given me, that I've taken on, um, that I've thought were mine, that were never mine. Um, relationships, habits and patterns, pain um, that I've been avoiding or ignoring, hoping that it goes away. But that's hard work to like keep digging deeper, <laughs> like unveiling like, oh, I am way more selfish than I thought, you know, or wow, I totally abused this relationship and that's on me. And I, you know, what does that look like then to make amends and, and make something right with someone? So the, the book has been helpful um, in my own personal journey as, right, as I keep pushing back and being uncomfortable. That's kind of the point is to become, get to a level of conscious where I feel like I stand in truth, my truth, and for me, God's truth, but then I know who I am 
and that's how I'm going to move through the rest of my life. So, and for my kids, I want to do it for them and my husband. So, because that's the unfortunate part. You bring all your bullshit to the table and they're the ones that hurt the most, right? Like I can pull myself out and if I hurt myself, like I can wrestle through that. But what sucks is that the people you love the most are the ones that get hurt the most. And I was starting to see that and I was like, oh, let's surrender this and be done. So I don't know what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to grab some lettuce and be right back. I was one of the first of my friends to get married and the first to have kids. And um, when I started having children is when we were really involved um, down in Haiti. I've been going to Haiti um, since I was 18. And, and so I, I was feeling like, I can't jet off and do the things that I want to do. I can't be a part of this bigger story. And though I participate it and find value in that, to me, there, the intentionality always behind that is that it always has to be balanced with the opposite. That global is important, but not at the expense of local. So both those truths have to sit together and be held together. And so, that was a really hard process for me because I love to travel. I love to meet people. I love to see how they live, how they love, how they do life, how they work, how they do culture, how they do parties, how they do, you know, growing food. Like I, there's so much diversity in the way humanity lives and I'm fascinated by that. And I got to watch everybody else leaving and I was like, okay, I'll just change another diaper, you know? And that was really, especially for a girl who didn't set out to have children, was definitely hard for me. And so I think just through understanding that paradox and that conflict of global at the expense of local, really started to invest locally. Mm -hmm. And then especially seeing the parallels um, because humans are humans, right? And we all function very similarly with similar struggles and joys and, and our needs for things. And so I think through that, I started to realize the impact that teaching my children, but especially opening up my home and inviting people in. And as somebody who's a public speaker and, and believes in the power of an individual and believes in the, the power of that story and the way that it affects other people, if it is true for you, then it has to be true for me. I want to be the person of integrity who, if asking others to partake in something, will make an effort to do the same. So if I believe one life can make a difference, then I'm gonna try to cut my trash in half. Like we're, you know, so many people on the planet and the planet is just taking such abuse and it feels small. And sometimes when something feels really small, then it's easy to just stop because it just doesn't feel like it's enough. But I can't do that, especially if I can put three people into the world who have a deep respect, appreciation, and understanding of why it's important. So <clears throat> I think just in the last, I don't know, five, six years, and it just snowballs, especially when you're trying to live a conscious life as you start pulling back more and more the ways in which you realized, oh, I didn't understand before, right? Like I'm seeking deeper knowledge of myself, of my community, of the earth, um, of art, of society, how we work together, how we do this thing called life together. Mm -hmm. um, and it all is, I mean, it's all intricately connected. So you can't just do one piece. I get caught up and I want to do something big. But if that's my only purpose, right, then I'm missing all the small ways in which I can work. I had just started reading about community gardens in the new popularity of them probably five years ago, probably. And then three years ago, uh, five years ago, there used to be a house here and the tornado took it when it came and hit North Minneapolis. 
and it was barren for two years and it wasn't available for community gardening space. And then one Saturday morning we were sitting here and having breakfast and a whole crew of people showed up and they started the garden and we were so excited. And I'm gonna be honest, I was real excited because I kind of wanted to participate. At this point I was growing a portion of our food in the backyard and we'd cut down three trees to build a bigger garden and like all these things, right? But if I'm gonna help out in the community, it was awfully convenient that it was right next door. <laughs> and I was like, this is perfect. And we get to help and we get to meet people. You know, 15 different neighbors showed up. It, the garden got tilled, it got planted, and then nobody showed up for the rest of the year. And so there was one woman, um, Ivy, who came and she watered and I weeded. And still I was like, I still don't really know if that's a plant or a weed. And I didn't know that we should have staked the tomatoes earlier because now they're all falling over and now it's too late to like put in the cage, right? Like I, we had no idea. She's like, I've never grown anything in my life. And I was like, we're a great team for this then. <laughs> and so I read, I read a lot and I started talking with other gardeners and I started joining gardening clubs and meeting people. And so I asked, I asked for it and I said, I'd like to take over the garden. Over 50% of the demographic in Falwell, where we are, are under the age of 18. We have more children here than we do adults. So with that information, how does a community garden, if, I, right, if, if it's only tomatoes and collard greens and broccoli and peppers and um, squash and whatnot, then that's not full, it's not serving the need of the community fully. And so it's always asking those questions of, of, okay, let's get a team of people to run the garden, a team that is diverse in a sense of age, um, class, knowledge, race, and uh, what they can provide for the garden. Do you have a trick? Or do I need a bigger knife? Either a bigger knife or... We grow food and we grow oh. hope. And I believe that to be a very real and honest thing. I want people to know that their story matters. They're not just a statistic, that they're not just another number in the system, but that who they are, what they bring to the table, their experiences, their gifts, their talents, their weakness, their history, their baggage, all of that, that matters. And so not only can you bring your story there, your story is validated here, um, but we're creating a new story. It pauses the rush of city living and reminds you that it takes two months to grow some of this stuff. And you have to keep showing up to tend to it and love it and take care of it and be gentle with it. And it's this calming reminder for all aspects of your life. Living in the why behind something, not just the how. It's not about now you need to make homemade jam and you're a better person. Like that has nothing to do with it. It's what inspires you and what is the heart behind what you do so let's focus on that so we're in we're living in inspired space instead of a to-do space oh i can turn the music off i was blaring the beyonce before ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> i want to live in the mystery and i want to be challenged and teach my kids how to do that and i've noticed that i am uncomfortable all the time now because I'm struggling with all you know all the different things and that comes out in my writing and whatnot but I think that we should and I think we owe it not just to ourselves but to our families and to each other in our immediate society um, and to the story of time to say that we wrestled with this so that we could find the truest form, and I want to. I want to be a part of that in any small way that I can. I'm just gonna. Do you mind if I give a blessing? No, no, no. Is that all right? I was, okay. <laughs> I was hoping someone. Would. Just... Oh, thank you, God. We are so thankful for your provision. Um, always. Thank you for the bounty. Um, may we always show respect in the way that we live our lives to each other, to you, and to the earth. Bless the food to our bodies that we may be full of strength and compassion and kindness for all that we encounter. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
This episode was recorded and produced by Daniel Zamzow and me. Web layout and design by Aaron Woods. And a special thanks again to Danny for hosting us, Daniel and myself, for a wonderful lunch. Before we say goodbye for this week, I would like to invite anyone that has a story that they think they'd like to share on our podcast to send us a note. You can head over to our website and there are links about sharing your story. We'd also love to hear from you on iTunes if you're enjoying this podcast jump on iTunes and just leave us a quick review. It helps other people to find storytelling podcasts that they will enjoy. So it helps us and it helps other folks um, find what they're looking for. So head over to iTunes and leave a quick review. If you have a couple of minutes, it will be greatly appreciated. Finally, 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 if you are a fan of social media, we are regular posters on Twitter Instagram, and Facebook. So all of those listings are a face project. And uh, we hope to see you there. We'll see you next week.